in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you take your place and preeminence in our midst tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that your will will be done tonight in the name of Jesus and your purpose for our gathering today will be established in the mighty name of Jesus. Every flesh, everyone here today, physically, online, will not go, Father, without your touch and impact tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you please anoint my tongue like the pen of a ready writer and use it, Lord, as you please, as you desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Not of anything I may have prepared, but Lord, that your name and your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we put our hands together for the Lord this evening? Hallelujah. You're welcome to our discovery tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's have our seat in God's presence. Amen. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be in our midst again tonight, this evening, to bring, to share a few things. Um with us this evening. Of course, I stand before you with all honor um, and humility as, um, and I thank uh, Mama and Pastor for the privilege to stand before you tonight and the opportunity to bring the word to us this evening. In Jesus' name, you're welcome. And everybody online, you're welcome as well in Jesus' name. All right, so, well, uh, I believe we had a very, 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 very fantastic and wonderful time at the Hour of Discovery, I'll be sorry, at the Wonder Working World Conference, isn't it? I think we can all move to the red seat in the middle, so if you're at the back, please come forward if you're here, so that we can have good connection as we learn at the feet of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. If you're at the back and you can come forward, please come forward and just let's hold, move to the right seat. Amen. All right. So we just concluded the Wonder Working World Conference. And of course, I believe that um, we were all very much blessed, isn't it? Isn't it? Um, a lot of lessons we learned, right? For me, for some of the days I had like five pages of notes, you know, um, you cannot be under the kind of ministration we were opportune to be under and not um, take full advantage or not take as much note as you can. And you know, I don't think the things I wrote are things that I can even exhaust in a month, you know. Um, but particularly, there's something that I would just like to share with us as part of my own lessons in the course of the conference. Something that jumped at me. And um, of course, I have a couple of prayer points, of course, as well. Uh, that was born out of a lot of things that we learned in the course of the conference, which I'm going to lead us in as well. Uh, Refuge, please, I would need you to grab mic and let's, let's share notes or compare notes together this evening. Um, we're taught that the word of God framed the life of David, right? among many other characters that we were, I mean, thought about. But particularly, I just want to talk about David. And I want to, you know, I want us to learn and glean from what we were taught and see how we can apply it to our own lives before and our present situation before we go into prayers. So we thought that the word of God 
of course, God's word framed the life of David. And David, as we know, was a shepherd boy and was just the last of the sons of his father and his mother, Jesse. And um, where was he usually at? Usually in the field where he was taking care of the sheep and taking care of the animals and making sure that they were safe, they are secured, well-fed, and the rest of it. But the Bible says, which is something for me that I've never really, you know, um, I've never really looked at in the light with which we were taught at the conference. In uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 1, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your own with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Says I have provided myself a king among his sons. And we learned that God himself raised or built up David. Now, how did this happen? Let's look at the book of Psalms, chapter 89. How did this happen? Let's look at the book of Psalms, chapter 89, from verse 19. Psalms 89 from verse 19. Then you spoke in a vision to your Holy One and said, I have given help to one who is mighty. I have exalted one chosen from the people. All right, let's go. I have found my servant, David. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Now, this, of course, obviously is talking about before um, uh, Samuel brought the oil physically, all right? Let's go. 21. With whom my hand shall be established. Also my arm shall strengthen him. So this is how God built David. The enemy shall not outwit him, nor the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face. And plague those who hate him. Let's go. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name his horn shall be exalted. Amen. Also I will set his hand over the sea and his right hand over the rivers. Next verse. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. In this verse 26, let's look at verse 26. In this verse 26, why did God have this kind of confidence in David? That he will cry to him. Why did he have this kind of confidence in David? Can anybody help us? Why did God have this kind of confidence in David? That is somebody that when he cries to me, he will cry to me. He will not cry to another deity. He will not cry to another God, but he will cry to me. This was how God built him, all right? Why did God have this kind of confidence in David? Can anybody help us, please? Can anybody help us? Please, Brother Adotto. Hallelujah. So, I think the, the answer will be in 1 Samuel 13, 14. All right. Yes, that's before we even got to 16. Okay. Um, 13, 14. Okay, so let me read for me. It says, but now... Your kingdom, this is God talking to Samuel, uh, yes. Saul. Yes. They said, but now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man 
after his own heart. And the Lord has, the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. So God had this concerning David even before the, the issue of him being anointed came to limelight. So Hallelujah. God had confidence in David before kingship came to limelight. Hallelujah. Now, let's hear what Brother Tso said. God had confidence in David before the issue of kingship came to play. All right? How did that confidence came about? If you remember, when David went to meet with his brothers at the war front, if you remember, and when Saul was interrogating him and wondering, why are you this little boy coming and with all confidence and boldness that you want to fight Goliath? Are we together? Are we together? This, great. Coming to get, why you, this young boy, coming that you want to fight Goliath? What did David reply? What did David reply? Can anybody help us? Do you remember? No. David said that God did something. What did God do? What was the victory David relayed to Saul that gave him confidence to say, I can face Goliath. What, was the, what, what were the victories? The boy had walked with God even in the wilderness when he's tending the sheep. He had seen how God walked through him to kill the lion and with the bear. The bear with his bare hands. He, could, he knew it couldn't have been his strength. It was God who in him. Okay, so he gave that testimony that through him, through the servant, through your servant, God delivered the lion and the bear. So my understanding with this, from this verse 26, is that David had established a trust in God while he was in the wilderness. All right? Before the issue of kingship came about, like Brother Dotto said. In the course of facing the lion, in the course of, you know, we only talk about, the Bible only talk about the lion and the bear. All right? There could have been snakes. There could have been some other issues that happened and stuff like that. But David had established a confidence in God and he had established trust in God. While nothing around kingship, nothing around royalty, Nothing around success was even smelling around him. While he was in the backside of the desert, while he was where nobody saw him, nobody knew where he was, he had established confidence in God. And of course, that I believe that that is why God is saying, this guy, he will cry to me and I will respond to him. Hallelujah. So this is one of the lessons I learned that even in these challenging or tough times that we may be, of course, God has a purpose for us. God has a place he's taking us to. But before we get there, one of the things that we build our God's confidence in us is how we treat the present situation we are going through. With the little situation we are going through, are we already giving up on God? Are we already getting frustrated and thinking God is not able to come through? God is watching and he's seeing and he's thinking to himself, okay, if the big things come and the big challenges come, is this person able to stand? Hallelujah. Because the little victories David had when he was in the backside of the desert boosted his confidence in God. And that's why he can come out and say, I can face the Goliath. If I could have faced the lion, if I could have faced the bear, why can't I face the Goliath? I can do it. So when we face our own bear, when we face our own lion, when we face our own snakes, when we face our own tigers, when we face our own trouble, it is a preparation for the place God is taking us to. And I think that's why it's also important that we find ourselves in the word of God. We are able to locate our purpose in the word of God so that when those trials and troubles and challenges and tough time comes, we have confidence that if God has given us victory, then 
we are able to get to where he wants us to get to. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So I believe that this encounters boosted David's confidence in God and God saw that and he says, this guy will cry to me in the time of trouble. He will not run back in the face of danger. It will not be like the sons, the Ephraims and the, and the Manasses who turn back on the day of battle. He will not turn back on the day of battle. He will face the lion headlong. He will face the bear headlong. Are you the type of person that easily cringe when challenges and situations come? Yes, the times are tough. The times are wonderful. How are you handling it? Are you seeing your cup as half full or you are seeing your cup as half empty? How are you seeing your cup? How are you seeing your cup? The water and the flood and, and, and the rainstorms that is falling today, are you seeing as an opportunity for your boat to rise above the earth? Or you are seeing it as a time that, oh, let me join the rest of the people and begin to wallow in pain and begin to castigate people and begin to make noise and live a life of regret. What are you seeing? What will God's confidence be in you later on? How would it look like? Hallelujah. Let's read on verse 27. Also, I will make him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. Next. My mercy I will keep for him forever. And my co covenant shall stand firm with him. Hallelujah. So we see all of how God had prepared and raised and built up David. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, Brother Otto mentioned about Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 13, I want us to see something there. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandments of the Lord your God which he commanded you. For now, see, let's look at this statement together. For now, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Forever. So God's intention for Saul to come was not a mistake. That Saul as an individual. I'm not talking about the kingship now and at the time the kingship came. I'm talking about Saul as an individual. So God had the plan for Saul. His plan for us is of good and not of evil. God had the plan to establish Saul because this is what prophet Samuel will say. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom. And why did God refused to establish the kingdom of Saul. Three things happened, isn't it? Right? Are we together? The first was what? We are doing, we are doing religion service together. So, the first was what? Just, okay, let's talk about one. Anyone that you know. What, what, what happened? What happened? What did Saul do? Why, was he why did he become rejected? Somebody that was accepted. Why did he become rejected? Why did he have to be replaced? What happened? He committed sins, right? Right? So what were those sins? What happened? We're all together in, in, at the conference. There's a micro... Someone is raising their hand. Okay, yes. Disobedience. The scenario. I wanted us to paint the scenario together. Okay, he was asked to wait for Prophet Samuel yes. before offering the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and he refused. And he refused. And he was asked to wipe out the, the entire Amalekites. Amalekites. Yes. But he decided to spare the fats. And the king and the, king and the best things. And, yeah. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, these were the things Saul did. And I was wondering, maybe you can help me. I was wondering, was there ever a time in all of this that I actually, you know, knelt down 
and felt remorse for his actions. Did we see it in any part of the scriptures? Huh? I can't hear you. Okay. That he actually felt remorse and knelt down and cried bitterly and said, God, have mercy. I am sorry. Did we see it in any part of the scripture? Because if he actually did, maybe something would have changed. Maybe his throne may, may not have been established forever, but maybe something may have, you know, changed about him, about his kingship and the rest of it. Now, that's the contrast with David, right? At the time, he had issues with Bathsheba and the prophet came and he killed uh, uh, Uriah and the prophet came and said, this, this, that, that has happened. And what, did, what did David do? He was remorseful and apologetic. So, one of the lessons that I learned in this characters is that, yes, we might make mistakes. Yes, we might fall into troubles. But our ability to be able to take responsibility and go back to God is a difference maker. Hallelujah. Our ability to go back to God is a difference maker. And that was also the difference maker between Peter and Judas. Hallelujah. So in our mistakes, let us learn to take responsibility and go back to God for mercy. And go back to God and cry to God for mercy. And just like we were taught, that there was no time David committed the same sin twice. Once the mistake happened, it becomes a genuine mistake. And he doesn't repeat it. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin and expect grace to abound? Saul disobeyed the first time. Refused to wait for the prophet. He had a second chance. Go and destroy the Amalekite. He disobeyed the second time. And of course, God felt, like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just done with you. Hallelujah. So part of my lessons at this conference is what I am sharing with us. And I also understand that part of their difference is also in their character. Let's look at the Bible in Isaiah chapter 10. Verse 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. The book of Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1 to 5. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune which they have prescribed. Next. To rob the needy of justice and to take what is right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless. What will you do in the day of punishment and in the day of desolation which you come from afar to whom you will flee for help? Where will you leave your glory? Yes. Am I reading the scripture I wanted to read? Verse 4, let me see verse 4. Without me, they shall bow. No, this is not the scripture I'm looking for. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I wanted to point to us some of the characters um, from both of them. And let's examine it together. All right, let's read Psalms chapter 78, verse 70 to... Um, 72. He also chose David his servant and took him from the sheepfolds from following the ewes that had that had young the ewes that had young he, he brought him to shepherd Jacob his people and Israel is in his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. This scripture taught me that David had the proven integrity even in the presence of God. He had the proven integrity, even in the sight of God. And that's why I think it's important that we take our integrity level 
very, very seriously because God is also watching. Whether man is seen, whether man is not seen, God is watching. Our integrity level is very, very important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so we, for me, these are some of the things I learned. And um, in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 2 as well, we see that they also had a difference in understanding of time. They had a difference in understanding of time. Saul had, uh, Paul, uh, David had an understanding of prophetic timing. And in my note here, I wrote that prophetic timing is key to your breakthrough. Saul violated the word that was spoken. The word that framed him. Saul violated it. And of course, it was part of what led to his rejection. But David understood timing. The fact that he was anointed did not mean that he began to scheme and look for how he will become crowned. Hallelujah. I hope you remember that Saul was still on the throne when David became anointed. And Saul was, still on the, Saul was still on the throne for several years before it got to David's time before he ascended the throne. Some of us may, you know, know that, okay, I'm going to be here tomorrow. And then because you know, okay, letter is coming for you. And then you start skipping and looking for how to establish the word of God by yourself. David waited for God to establish what he has spoken to him. For the way he had formed his word about his life. We also have a responsibility to wait on God to establish us where and when he had said he would establish us. Saul could not wait. It was Impatience was one of the things that, that affected him. Wait and wait and wait. I am coming. He could not wait. But David had a difference. He waited even years after he had been anointed, after the Holy, the Spirit of God had left Saul, you know, as Saul, David was anointed, the Spirit of God left Saul and came upon David immediately. And then the Bible says a distressing spirit went on Saul, right? Despite the fact that he knew that God's anointing is upon him, he did not scheme and find a way to get to the throne. In fact, he did not even scheme to get to the palace. It was a skillfulness that found him in the palace because he knew how to play the harp and stuff. And Saul needed somebody to do that so that the spirit of distress that is upon him can be calm. Hallelujah. But David, despite the fact that he was in the palace and he knew he was anointed, the Bible says he still went about his duties dutifully, diligently, obediently. There was no record of how he looked for ways to, break, to help God. Hallelujah. You remember those characters that tried to help God? You remember those characters, the family of Isaac and Rebecca, how they help, how they tried to find a way to establish Rebecca found a way to establish the the word of God that was spoken that framed the life of Jacob and and Esau. How we found a way to establish that word. David did not find a way to by himself establish the word of God. He continued in the way God was training him and building him up. And I think that is very important for the rest of us today as well. God may have spoken to you that you will be this tomorrow, you will be that tomorrow. You have found yourself in the framing of God's word and everything. We have a responsibility to just keep following God as he's leading us. Not to find a way to establish or to make God's word to come to pass. No, he's able to make his word to come to pass. Because he has said that not a jot or a tittle out of his word shall go unfulfilled. He is able to bring his word into fulfillment. Hallelujah. So he doesn't really need our help. Saul tried to help God and that was part of what led to his fall. We should not try to help God in bringing God's word to pass in our lives because he is God. He has spoken it. He is able to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, another lesson I learned, which I will say finally before we go into prayers, is that David was not particular about the throne. He wasn't particular about the crown. He was particular about the spirit of God that was on his inside. What are you particular about? 
the things you have, the things you possess, the things you want, the place you want to get to, the achievement you are looking for. What is the driving force that is driving you? David found himself in the word of the Lord and that kept driving him. What is driving you? The achievement you want to achieve? Or the salvation? Or the spirit of God that is on your inside? What is really driving you? Is a question that we all need to answer. What do we value most? Are you ready to lose salvation and everything? As long as you are able to keep the possessions that you have. As long as the possession is not taken away. What are you ready to lose? I pray that the Lord will continue to remind us of his word. And bring understanding to us even in the days ahead. Concerning the things we have learned at the WWE conference in the mighty name of Jesus. I'd like us to rise up as we take a couple of prayer points this evening. Prayer points stemmed out of the things that we've, we have been taught, that we have learned. I'd just like us to take a couple of them. In the book of Zechariah, let's open to Zechariah chapter 10. De chapter 12, sorry. Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12 from verse 10. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as the one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for his firstborn. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 39 verse 29, it says, and I will not hide my face from them anymore. For I shall have, for I shall have poured, I shall have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says the Lord. Hallelujah. In Joel chapter 2 verse 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I want us to pray for ourselves that the Lord will pour upon us and pour upon his church the spirit of supplication and grace in the mighty name of Jesus. For the days ahead, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will pour upon us the spirit of grace, the spirit of supplication in the mighty name of Jesus. That grace that we have received at this conference will not depart from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will pour upon us the spirit of supplication. He will pour upon this house the spirit of supplication in the mighty name of Jesus. The ability and the grace to pray in the name of Jesus. It will release upon us in the name of Jesus as a people, as individuals and as a church. We will not struggle in the place of prayer in the name of Jesus. The grace of God for the next level, for the days ahead is upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Recaposeta lebregedosa, liregebosha Pray that the Lord will pour upon you the spirit of grace and supplication in the mighty name of Jesus. It will open your eyes, oh God, to see the invincible and your ears to hear the inaudible in the name of Jesus. The spirit of prayer is coming upon us as a afresh in the name of Jesus. The spirit of supplication, the spirit of prayer is coming upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. The grace of God, the grace that we need for the journey ahead, the grace that we we need for the journey ahead is released upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. Recapo zanta lebregedosa, recapa zata la bragadosa, cat lebregedosa, maragabo zete lebregedosa. 
Lede gebo shete li bregedo, rekapo sata te liri gaba sete le bregedoza. E la kataya gaza bragaba shegata le bregedoza. Ragaba zagata la kataya ga le bregedoza. Makata le praka zata riba jegata le kesete le bregedoza. Father, please pour upon us, O God, the spirit of supplication in the name of Jesus. Rekapa zanta yaga lede gebo zegata. Pour upon us your spirit, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. As you put upon Bezalil, O oh God, your spirit, O oh God, in all manner of workmanship. Father, release your spirit upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. Rekapo zanta lebregedosa. Rekapo sufiria kapa. Rakapa zagata yaga lebregedosa. Maragabo zete lebregedosa. Kat lebrekepo. Rakapa sakata yaga lebregedosa. E laka zenderi bo sheta regabo. Regaba zata tabrakatori gaba. Makata yaga lebraka. Pazata, ma reka poza gata lebreke pozate, reka pazanda rigabo sheta lebregedo, reka pazata ta ragaba yagata raka pazeta. In the name of Jesus, pray that the Lord will pour upon His church the spirit of supplication. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of supplication, the Lord will pour upon His church. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not struggle in the place of prayer, but we will pray through. In the name of Jesus, ma raka. Pazeta lebregedosa, recapo zanta lebregedo ricapa, macata yaga lebregedosa, recapa satata bregedosa, e macata riba. Lerigabo seta lebregedo zegata rakapazata lebregedoza e lakata yaga labragadoza rekapa father pour upon your church oh God the spirit of grace and supplication in the name of Jesus for the days ahead oh God pour upon us oh God the spirit of grace and supplication in the mighty name of Jesus le kazota repa rega le kazanta riba jeta azota lebra kapazete le riba zata rekepo sufiria Kapa zegata, ma raga bo jete le bregedosa, re kapa zata le bregedosa, e ma zata riga ba zegata, re kapo santa yaga la raga bo zegata, ma rege bo zegata le bregedosa, ra kapa santa yaga le bregedosa, re kapa zende riga bo shegata. Pray that in the name of Jesus, God's presence will be manifest in our services and our worship. In the name of Jesus, God. Pray that in our worship, oh God, that the presence of God will manifest as a church in the name of Jesus. Rekapo zanta lebregedosa. Rekapa rekazagata. Lebragaba zata yaga leregeba. E lako zenderi gabo sheta lebregedosa. Regaba zete librekepo zegata rakapo zegata. Rekapa zanta ta rakapa. Lekatori ba sheta rigaba. In the name of Jesus. Father we bless your holy name this evening. We give you praise everlasting Father. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. In Genesis chapter 7, chapter 7 verse 17. In Genesis chapter 7 verse 17. Of course, the life of Noah, we see the life of Noah. And there was a particular statement that was made. And I'd like to read it to us in Genesis chapter 7 verse 7. It says, now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted up the hack and it rose high above the earth. The waters increased and lifted up the hack and it rose high above the earth. The pastor said that the water that drowned some people was the same water that rose the ark of Noah. No matter the situation and challenges, I want us to pray for ourselves that you will not be drowned in the name of Jesus but rather the Lord will lift you to safety. The Lord will secure you in these times. He will cause you to be prosperous and he will cause you to be comforted in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will lift you to safety. He will lift you above the waters in the name of Jesus. He will cause you to be safe. He will cause you to be secured. He will cause you to be comfortable from every Every 
pain and trouble in the name of Jesus that the word the Lord will lift you up to safety in this season in this times in this period in the name of Jesus when businesses are drowning when people are losing jobs pray that the Lord will lift you to safety in the mighty name of Jesus Lord, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus, in this challenging and tough times, oh God, lift me to safety, lift my family to safety, lift our businesses to safety, in the name of Jesus, the family of Noah was safe in the ark, and you lifted their ark above the water, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus, that you lift us above the water, the water of economic troubles and challenges. Lift us up, oh God, above the water. In the name of Jesus, cause us to be prosperous than ever before. Cause us to be safe and secure. Cause us to be comfortable. In the name of Jesus, in every way we are experiencing pain at this time, Lord, bring comfort to us. Bring comfort to us. Bring comfort to us. In the name of Jesus, Father, lift us to safety, O God. Lift us high above the waters, O God. In the name of Jesus, Recapo Sata Lift up to safety, O oh God. Comfort us of every pain, O oh God. Comfort us of every pain, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, Recaposegata. Lift our businesses to safety. Lift our jobs to safety. In the name of Jesus, cause us to be prosperous even in this season. In the name of Jesus, Recaposegata. Makata yaga lebregedosa. E kazata ragaba. Alakata yaga lebregede. E zanta tori gaba. E maleke teria gaba. Azagata lebregedosa. E zembregede. E lagata ragaba. Ayagata ragaba. Ale kazota regabo. E kazente riba. Makazeta te praka pazata. Lakota rikapa. E kazeta lebregedosa. Father, in these times, oh God, lift our act to safety. Lift our families to safety. Lift our church to safety. Lift our businesses to safety. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift our jobs to safety, oh God. In the name of Jesus. When men say there is a casting down, we will say there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus, our acts will not drown in this season. Our acts will not drown in this season, but rather lift us up to safety. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, your word says it is the Lord thy God that teaches thee to prosper, that teaches thee to make profit in this season. Oh God, teach us to be prosperous, teach us to be prosperous. Recapo zegata, harakapa yagazagata, e makazeta lebregedosa, e kataragabo. Father, we bless your holy name, O oh God. We give you praise, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, of course, lots of teachings were sent around the book of Genesis and about, around the history of creation. And without flogging this point, pastor said, darkness is the absence of what? Light. And it says, God looked and saw darkness. And he didn't complain. He didn't fret. He wasn't perturbed at all. He just simply spoke a creative word. And what was not existing came into existence. 
I don't know what is not existing in your life and you desire to see exist. I don't know what darkness you are going through and you need light to show forth. This evening, I want you to begin to speak the creative word. I want you to begin to speak the creative word. Over your situation, begin to speak that creative word. In the name of Jesus, begin to decree light in every dark areas. In the name of Jesus, begin to decree your freedom in every way that you have been bound. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak that creative word. Begin to speak what is not existing that you desire to see in existence. In the name of Jesus, we were so that God did not fret, he did not, he was not afraid, he just spoke a word, the creative word from his mouth, and of course, light came into existence. Begin to speak light to your situation in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know what area of your life you're experiencing darkness. Begin to speak light, begin to speak light, begin to speak light in the name of Jesus. Our tongue is anointed like the pen of a ready writer. Begin to speak light in the name of Jesus. God has given us a new tongue. Begin to speak light into your situation. In the name of Jesus, he has given us the tongue, a wholesome tongue. Begin to speak light. Begin to speak light. Begin to speak light. Those things that do not exist, speak to them. Let them come into existence. In the name of Jesus. Are you going through trouble in your offices? Begin to speak light. Begin to speak solution. In the name of Jesus. Are you going through a troubled time at work? Begin to speak light into your situation. In the name of Jesus. Is your business struggling? Begin to speak light into your situation. Are are you struggling spiritually? Begin to speak light, oh God. Begin to speak light that the, every lethargy, every spiritual lukewarmness that they give way in the name of Jesus, that you become sound spiritually, you become alert spiritually, you become responsive spiritually. Begin to speak fruitfulness to every barren situation in your life. Begin to speak fruitfulness. Begin to speak fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. That every barrenness in your life give way for fruitfulness. Barrenness of the mind. Barrenness of your spiritual life. Begin to speak fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Recapose the Father, we bless your holy name. We give you praise, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In the book of Luke chapter 2 from verse 1, pastor said something to us. And we can find it in the book of Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. This exercise was, gonna, was God decreed and wanted this exercise to take place so that Jesus will be born. In Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Now, I did not, I do not only see this. I saw as well in Esther chapter 4 from verse 13. Let's go to the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 13. And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape 
in the king's palace any more Jew, any more than all the other Jews. Next verse. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place. But you and your house and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther was positioned in the palace for this kind of season. Verse 15. Verse 15. Then Esther told them to reply Mordecai, and of course, fast, gather the Jews fast and pray for me, and all of that. A decree that will favor you can happen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 11, let's quickly take a look at it. Let's see what God is able to do. Isaiah chapter 45, verse, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands. You command me. Next. I have made the earth and created man on it. God has made the earth and he has created all of us. Even the devil for the day of adversity. I, my hands stretch out the heavens and all their hosts I have commanded. So God has commanded the host of heaven. He's commanding the men on earth. God is commanding everything. God is commanding everything. Verse 13. I have raised him up. Now, this scripture is talking about Cyrus. I have raised him up in righteousness. And I will direct all his ways. He shall Build my city, talking about Jerusalem, and let my exiles go free. Talking about Daniel and the rest of the Israelites who were in captive in Babylon at the time. Hallelujah. He shall build my city and let my exiles go free. Not for a price, nor reward, says the Lord. If God wants you to be favored, he can remove the person occupying a seat and put somebody there that will cause you to be favored. If God wants your glory to shine, he can cause things to happen. There can be a decree, even right from the presidency, just to favor you. I want you to open your mind and begin to pray that God will activate situations that will work in your favor. In the name of Jesus, he will raise anyone anyone necessary in any position so that your glory will shine so that you will be favored in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus that God will activate every any situation necessary that will favor you that will favor your cause that will favor your business that will favor your career that will favor your family that God will activate Activate any kind of situation necessary. In the name of Jesus, God activated the situation of census so that Jesus can be born in Bethlehem. God activated the situation of the Jews so that Esther can be able to save them. God activated all of the captivity so that he, he erased Cyrus to, to be able to deliver his people. He purposely raised Cyrus and he says that he has directed him to do it will. Pray that God begins to direct anyone necessary so that his purpose over your life can be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. That God will orchestrate situations to propagate and establish his church forever. In the name of Jesus, God will activate situations that will establish his church forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We're going to pray this prayer point for the last time, but I want to bring you an understanding. And I saw it in a movie. I watched a movie and there was a situation, the goods of a certain businessman was seized by the custom and stuff. And his boy 
went to the custom office and was looking for who can help to be able to release the goods and the rest of it. And he suddenly met somebody. And the person, when he met the person, he had conversations. And the person said, ah, the situation has gone past me. I can't handle it anymore. But you know what? I will take a risk and see what can be done. And of course, the thing became resolved. Somebody else was ready to take a risk on his head so that that person can be favored. You can be in a situation where God will orchestrate somebody that will be ready to take the risk so that you can be favored. That is what happened to Esther. Esther had to take the risk even if it meant her dying so that the Jews can be favored, so that the Jews can be set free. I want you to pray for yourself that God will orchestrate any situation necessary so that his purpose for your life can be established in the name of Jesus. He will raise anyone necessary in any position necessary so that his purpose for you, for your life can be established in the name of Jesus. Father, activate situations, oh God, so that your purpose upon my life, oh God, can be established in the name of Jesus. Activate people, oh God. Activate men, oh God. Activate people, oh God, so that your name upon my life can be glorified in the name of Jesus, so that I can be a signpost of your glory in the name of Jesus. Activate situations oh God, so that I can be a signpost, oh God, of your glory, so that I can be a signpost of your testimony, in the name of Jesus, activate situations, oh God, so that your church can be established, in the name of Jesus, so that your church can be a signpost of your glory, a signpost of testimony, in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless your holy name, O oh God. We give you praise, everlasting Father. We magnify you, O oh God. Begin to bless the name of the Lord tonight. Begin to worship him and thank him for answered prayers. Father, we bless your holy name. We give you praise, O oh God. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you, O Lord Jesus, for answered prayers. We give you praise, O oh God. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you because you are a faithful God. You are a glorious God. You are a wonderful God. The I am that I am, O oh God. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for everything you have done. Thank you for the blessings that we've received at the WWE conference because they are permanent in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. We give you praise everlasting. Father, receive all thanks, glory, honor, and adoration. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Shout a bigger amen. Put your hands together for the Lord as we welcome Mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Congratulations once again on the success of the WW conference. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Once again, I would just want to just, uh, you know, um, encourage us, counsel with us that let us not be weary in well-doing because if we faint not, we will do what? We will reap the reward. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to continue to listen to the message until the word becomes flesh in us. Amen. If there is nothing, if you do not take anything away, you must take this one away. That our words, that they are powerful. Hallelujah. The Bible says something that the word that I speak to you, that they are what? They are spirit and they are life. So we must take cognizance of what comes out of this mouth of us. Praise the Lord. This evening, just to just um, cap it all, I just want to, you know, share just one verse with us that we must, you know, take this verse and go with it, walk with it, let it guide our life. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, from verse 8 to 9, it is very, very common to us. 
with what God has done, we must not, you know, play light of it. The Bible says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for someone to devour. Resist him, stand firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Resist him. Okay. Stand firm against him and be strong in faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This word came to me as if I have never read it before. The Bible says something that we should be sober. We should be vigilant. We should be, you know, sober means we need to be serious. Not just make things that, you know, we are used with God's word. We are used with conferences. We are used with this. We are used with so many things. We have to be serious this time because the world that we are in, it is getting tougher. It is not going to get, you know, simpler. It's going to get tougher. I mean, I mean tougher because from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has done what? Suffered violence, and the violent must take it by force. Even as we have heard the word, that the words of our mouth, that they are powerful, we need to recreate our words by the words of our mouth, by the words of the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to begin to do something about it. It is not the amount of prayer that you pray that makes you know, everything to, to just happen. The Bible has said it that you know, life and death are in the powers of the tongue. And they that love it, we do what? They will eat the fruit thereof. Hallelujah. We have born of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Let us go in this same Spirit. And let us also be aware that the same Word of God says that we should seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And all other things will be added unto us. If we want to see our consolidation, we must seek first the kingdom of God. I know that when it comes to personal prayers, you know, people pray with passion in the church. You will know that, oh, people can really pray. Amen. But God has a need. He's about his kingdom. He's about his righteousness. Let us do that first. And the Bible says, seek that first so that all these things about our businesses, our finances, our job, our children, our this, our that, our that. God has commanded that we should seek first his kingdom. So let us look inward. What is it that we seek most? It should be his kingdom. Shout hallelujah. These are just a few words that, you know, God impressed in my heart, that God is even working, you know, in my heart with, and I thought to share it. Hallelujah. Because this world will be concerned about so many things. But let God take care of us. Shout hallelujah. Let's begin to be concerned about him. And let his light begin to shine out of us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord will work wonders in our life, in our situation, in everything that we do in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go forth, let us watch our word. Hallelujah. Because I believe God is speaking to me very, very powerfully. And I know that he's speaking to you too. Because what he says to one, he says to all. The Lord will continue to increase us more and more in the name of Jesus. This conference will not just come and go. It will leave an indelible mark in my life. Say to yourself, it will leave an indelible mark in my life. In Jesus' name. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let us bring out our offering. Our offering and our tie to honor the name of the Lord. Uh, we have been loaded, and some as you know, they are so loaded, they can't make it this evening. But you are here. But we still bless God. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the word. We thank you be, because we know that every word 
that has been said here in prayers, Lord, will receive answers unto them in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we come unto you this evening, O God, with our offering and our tithe, O God, Father, honor our giving in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your blessing rest upon the works of our hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Increase the fruit of our righteousness, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we go with your blessing and with your favor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.